Finance Committee to order. It is being televised and it has been being audio recorded so they can have it in the minutes later. And tonight we have with us the superintendent and assistant superintendent from the tech school to give us their annual budget presentation, which is always excellent, I should say. Well, thank you. And um, my assistant superintendent is Nathan May. He's our director of pupil personnel and special education services. So he runs guidance, school nurse, all the special education department. Okay. And um, he's with us tonight as well. And he does admissions and a few other duties as uh, called. So, Nate, could you just kind of go over there sure, as absolutely. I need the buttons? You're right through. Um, the purpose of tonight, as in past years, is to try to help the town of Northfield be able to see what's been going on at Franklin County Tech over the past year since we last met. And more importantly, to be able to see how we can plan together for what is expected down the road from a budgetary perspective. This is a FinCom meeting. And we are looking to try to support Northfield and project out what it may look like for the 2019-20 school year. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but if you can get the next slide. Thank you. Over the last year, um, we uh, had a significant increase in our advanced placement courses and the way that students performed, and we'll get to that in a bit. Our, our Tech Connect, um, is our summer academy for grades six, seven, and eight, and that increased to about a hundred students. Um, we had to well, we make an arrangement with the Irving School District, and we share um, a music instructor. They had a halftime music instructor, and we needed a music instructor, so we kind of merged it into a full-time position, which really helped out because. When you have those halftime positions, when you have someone that's really, really good, they have a tendency to leave to another school district to get a full-time job. So this was able to maintain um, the teacher in the Irving School District, and it also provided us with an opportunity to then encompass the music curriculum on a halftime basis. Um, we had a retirement on the previous year of a full-time music instructor. So what we decided to do with that is have a half-time music instructor and half-time Spanish instructor. That enabled our students that are out on job sites to develop skills for conversational Spanish. You know, it, it may not be a core curriculum, but they need to know how to work and understand some of the basic situations that could be a safety situation for them down the road. We, were, we also implemented a half-time health course we had a half-time special education math um, position. We increased our credit recovery program, and we continued with our summer school academy for those students that struggled. Next. Some of the uh, vocational initiatives is that we went to a full-time cooperative education coordinator. One of the surprises of this school year um, and last was that 56% of all of our seniors are out on paid co-op jobs or internships. That's, you know, during that one senior week, that's pretty impressive. You know, half the time they're out in jobs related directly to their vocational instruction and experience. Um, we also um, were able to increase our vocational special education support and, and we added a um, school adjustment counselor as the special education students as well. Now the reason for that, as you'll see in one of the slides in the future, we had a significant increase in our special education population over the last several years and we needed to make sure we accommodated their unique needs. Um, we did finish our first house project, I'll get to that, that's in the town of Irving. We finished the wiring of our parking lot and sports lights. We revamped our welding shop with a $500,000 competitive grant that we received and we also um, were able to use funds to um, put a new paint booth in our collision repair. Next. Our advanced placement, we received top honors out of 18 school districts in Massachusetts, Franklin, uh, out of 370 school districts in Massachusetts, Franklin County Tech was named as one of 18 school districts to the AP Honor Roll, which recognized schools for their significant progress and increases in performance as well. We were the only vocational school to receive that honor in the entire state of Massachusetts. 
Yeah. Our new house project right there in Irving is um, that's when we concluded it. You'll see the you know that was sold for two hundred and thirty eight thousand um, dollars, and the oh. kids did a wonderful job um, building that whole thing from soup to nuts. Next, and that seeds the next house. Yes, and the profits from that was able to buy another lot, other material supplies, another oh. foundation. Now our kids are on that house. So that's going to continue. That's a relationship that we have with the Greenfield Savings Bank. It's a 5013C foundation. And that enables our continuation for Franklin County Technical School to build a house for the community every single year. Okay, in, in past, some way past probably, there used to be somebody would want a house built. Mm -hmm. But now you're talking about buying the land and building a house and then selling it, is that Correct. right? Correct. I think in the difference is that we built houses for Habitat of Humanity. So it really was, uh, you know, working with an agency, yeah. um, which is only certain things we were able to do um, to really expose the students to the fullness of the full curriculum. Having us build our entire house from beginning to end was much more advantageous so that when they get out of school, they can really get their own job. Yeah. So that was really important. And that includes our landscapers. That includes, uh -huh. if you can turn it back a second, that includes our landscapers who did all the landscaping. They did a brick yeah. um, on the side. They did a patio and back. That includes our plumbers and HVAC. Mm -hmm. That includes our electricians and our carpenters. So they really, it was a team effort on a lot of that. Uh -huh. um, and it includes our CAD CAM. There was some designing that was done as well. So we really did a lot to encompass the yes. fullness of the uh, trades that we have here. Okay. Uh, we received a half a million dollar welding grant. Why is that important? Because technology is changing in the industries. When you have machines that are built in the 1940s and 50s, they are no longer relevant for students to receive jobs. So we were really focused on what skills do our students need in the welding shop, just like we do with machine tech Many years ago, about five years ago, we revamped that whole shock program to get it up to commu uh, com computer numerical control. We're doing the same thing with the welding shock program. We were able, that, there's a life-size robotic arm uh, that has to be programmed, set up, and run. And that's exciting. That, that's not the only thing that we received. We also were able to... Um, you go next one. Um, we received a huge... Piranha, which is basically a steel bending machine that's run by commu uh, computer numerical control. So the students have to learn that. We also uh, had a new ventilation system installed throughout the entire facility, not just the brand new. That space that you see there is a brand new 1,500 foot space that was part of the grant that we were able to do as well. And so that was significant. And uh, yep. Next is the collision repair booth. Yep, so we got the collision repair, and that was um, about $100,000 that we had bonded as well. And uh, that, that, that was the original paint booth from 44 years ago, and we had to replace it. So now all of a sudden, it's brand new, modern technology, and our students are in a safer, more ventilized environment for their own health. And we also, um, all of our students, you'll see we had um, four sports field lights on the right installed and two over the basketball courts. Our students did all that work. They dug all the trenches, they laid all the wire, they put up, um, they supported the putting up of the poles and all the light fixtures, saving us hundreds of thousands in order to be yeah. able to complete that job. It was incredible. So our students did a tremendous job and we were able to pull that off at a substantially lower cost than anyone else would be able to pull it off because of the labor. Yeah, good. All right, now let's talk about where we are. The bottom screen may be tough to read in the light, but it's um, on the far right-hand column, you'll see 463. 463 is our in-district enrollment for Franklin County Tech for October 1 of 2018. As you can see the trend, um, you'll see it's way back in 2013-14, uh, we were around 476 to 478. Then we dropped all the way down in October of 2016 to 437. Slowly, enrollment's been climbing back up. So our enrollment today is the same as it was in 2015 at 463. Let's see how it impacts over time. 
the five right hand column the 2012-13 we had um, we had 143 students that's the yellow so everything in yellow you'll see the top number was the percentage of students from the county which were part of that 143 so in the bottom below the 143 is 806 in the far right that was the total number of eighth graders available in Franklin County. So out of 806, you're going to watch that blue column for one second. 806, next year 735, next year 672, 662, and then all the way down to 598. In five short years, we went from 806 total available eighth graders down to 598. That's a significant loss in enrollment for all the schools in the county. We have averaged approximately 20% of the total pool over 10 years. So when we average that out, you can see the percent that we did take. Now you're probably saying, why didn't you take 20% back in 2012-13? We have to take qualified students. So we take the students who are qualified. They have to pass the eighth grade. That's what I mean. So if you don't pass the eighth grade, you're not going to be able to be a, considered to be a qualified student. And that would be the eighth grade of your member school district. So when you're going from 17.7% um, and now you're 143 students and we get to where we are today, we took 143 at 23% of the total population because we had that many qualified students. So that's where we are 2018-19. If we're going to project out the next several years, that data is based on those actual students that are existing right now in the younger grade levels. So we know there are 621 seventh graders for 2019-20 that will become eighth graders by that time frame. Right now, there's 621. So next year, we'll be pretty close. So we can project out what our enrollment might be based on the current available eighth graders and a current percentile that we could predict that would come to our school. Next slide. This is an interesting slide. Ninth and 10th graders over the last couple of years, Franklin County Tech has 38.5% students on IEPs. Now remember earlier in the screen, I was saying how we had to add a school adjustment counselor and some special education support in the vocational area. We might have to add another position or two as well to be able to reach the demand that has now changed. It never used to be that high. Right? Yeah. So it's really high. If you compare it to all the other school districts in the county who average 17.7% of special ed, we're all the way up almost double that or a little more than double that on average. So we have to be able to provide education for those students that are now coming into our school district. And we're happy to do that. But I wanted to make sure that you see sometimes when you see an increase in a position, you may ask why. Well, we are mandated by law to make sure that we provide the education for these particular students. This means, though, that they've gone through and <coughs> completed eighth grade somewhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What yep. were you last year? We were 30, last year we were 40% special ed. Okay. This incoming year we were uh, about uh, 37 and change, so our average over the last two years is 38.5%. Uh, prior to that, when we go back many, many years, we used to average about 26 to 28 percent. So there's a big shift, is mm -hmm. what we're saying. Um, and we, with that shift, we want to make sure that we are able to meet the students' needs. Yeah. Yeah. Northfield students, winter applications. I sat here last year and I explained where we were at. So if you ignore the last right hand bar that's standing all by its lonesome, we Primarily, we spoke about 2017, 18, and 18, 19. At the time that we met here last year, I explained that you know there were, um, if you look, there's the anticipated, the applicants that are enrolled and what was applied. We only had three students that applied here. I mean, we only had eight students that applied here at Franklin County Tech from the town of Northfield. And I said, well, based on maybe a trend. I might want to have a couple of more students um, and that will get us pretty close to what we would project out, right? I remember saying that. Well, we coincidentally, I got lucky with that because I'm no, I'm no Nostradamus. So um, we actually had exactly two more. So you'll see the screen where it says eight and then we had 10 that actually came in. 
If you look at the, what's interesting about this screen, look at the other years. In 2013, 14, 17 applied, 12 came in. It dropped off. Then 12 applied, 11 came in. 15 applied, 11 came in. 12 applied, 9 came in. Then it shifts the other way. Three come in. Yeah. Uh, three applied, seven come in. Eight applied, 10 come in. I had six. So if you go to the next screen, I'm predicting that number to go up. If we follow that trend, I just want to try to make the finance committee aware how they plan for the future budgets. If I was planning, I'd be planning for, at that 28 students that we told you about last year, six of those are graduating in 2019. That brings it down to 24. Currently, we have six applications, as you see right there in the far right. I don't think it's going to stay there. All right, I think we're probably going to get three or four more. So if you go to the next screen, if we consider that, six applications brings us to 28. I say we get five on top of that just to play it safe. I, I'm going to project from Northfield that we could have 33 students at Franklin County Tech. Now, what's interesting, if you can scroll a couple screens, that, that's good. Look at the bottom in red. Pioneer Regional cost per pupil 17500 Franklin County Tech's cost per pupil is 16500 for the town of Northfield. So for the first time in a long time, Franklin County Tech is significantly less for students to attend yeah. than they are from Pioneer. That's a different shift than we've been used to. It used to be higher because yes. of the technology involved and the equipment that you Well, I think what it has to do a lot with is um, <laughs> there's been some changes with the formula in the foundation budget. It, it is a, um, over the years, there's a thing called, called hold harmless. So how many years have you been in that hold harmless and how much have you been able to, so your towns continue to get assessed at a particular rate. You know, whether the schools are assessing it, you know, three, four, five, six, seven percent, that adds up over time. So your assessment per student keeps going up. Yeah. We're assessing the town of Northfield and all our towns at 2.8%. So as we continue to keep that assessment at the CPI, or the Consumer Price Index, we try to keep that assessment pretty close to that. That enables that shift to begin to happen. So our per pupil cost, as you can see right there, is actually 16508 for the town of Northfield. Um, so if a student chooses to go to Pioneer, that's a better school for them in a lot of situations. If, it, if a student chooses to go to Franklin County Tech, that's a better school for that particular yeah. student as well. All depends. You know, we're just a member school district of Pioneer. We are Pioneer. We're just an extension of what they have to offer. So we offer the vocational end of the Pioneer School District. who. I believe does a wonderful job with getting their kids ready for college and moving them on. Some, some, just because we are on television, I want to make the comment. Some people still have the idea that it's school choice out of Pioneer to go to Tech, and it is not. No, it's We're not. part of their district, right? and it's an option. Well, I think what happens is some people lump the Vote Tech schools in with the charter schools. Yeah, you know, yeah. and charter schools don't have board members on the committee, and, and Northfield does. They're not part of a regional agreement. They're not an extension of the school district. You know, we're, we're a partner with the towns. We're, not, yes. a, we're yeah. not in competition. So when your money goes, it's not going and never coming back. Many of our kids, as you already are aware here in town, they come back to Northfield after they receive their training. They start up their own businesses. They they get their jobs, they're paying taxes, they're living in the area. Our exit data says that we have a pretty good percentage of students coming back and paying taxes and going back. So you're feeding yeah. your town, yeah. you know, and I think that's what we are all a part of. We're all part of the same system. Next one. Capital assessment, as you know, about three years ago, we went out to bond for new windows and doors, a new roof, new pavement, all that stuff. And that's part of a 15-year bond, and that percentage is a little lower than we anticipated last year. The total price at the bottom of the screen was 185,000. Now it's 160,000. So the assessment, the equalized valuation that they calculate these formulas have changed a little bit. So Northfields is 8,417 in their assessment. Um, so we're, I believe, we're in year two. 
And this is basically the whole budget right in front of you. We have the sources of funding, how we get our money, and the uses of funding. This is one of the last screens. So the sources of funding, town assessment from taxation, that's something we can't control. That's what's dictated to us. Um, capital assessments, you'll see that 160000 we had on the previous screen. That's, that's up there as well. State aid, Chapter 70. There's the biggest jump. You notice we had $3.497 million the previous year, and this year $3.925 million. There was a change in the calculation and how they do Chapter 70 in the foundation formula, which enabled us to receive more money. That was based on a number of factors that the state may or may not choose to tell us all, but what we do know is that a big part of that was students in the poverty range students um, that had unique needs, right? Yeah. So, and then it also included um, the amount of years as well a school district was in Hold Harmless and how much money that was. There is a, there are several school districts in Franklin County that have been in Hold Harmless as Franklin County Tech for a number of years, but some have been 10 years. So when you add all that, the amount of students there below foundation is extremely important. So let's just use a figure, 500 students. If you came in at 470 students, the state then provides hold harmless. They're, they're giving you funds as if you had 500 students and you got 470. The next year, you could be 440. They're still giving you the money for the 500 oh, oh. students. Yeah. That's called hold harmless. They're holding you harmless because your enrollment dropped. But the closer you are to that 470 or that 500, so you got 490, 490, 490, you're not draining as much money from the state. So this foundation form is giving it back to you to the previous screen. So that's why that is a, um, that's why we received about $400,000 of an increase. Other towns that were close to foundation, we see a lot, Greenfield got a, a little over a million. Um, some schools got 100,000, some schools took a hit. So in Franklin County, some schools were down $100,000, $200,000. So it all depended on what the foundation formula was. Um, the next one is the state aid for transportation. That was pretty flat, um, went up just a, a little bit. We just got done with a transportation contract for a new five year, uh, which hasn't been ratified yet. But with that increase, um, it came right with what we budgeted. So we were pretty good there. We had the tuition from non-member towns. Those are those students who aren't members of Franklin County Tech that have to play it. They have to pay a significant increase in their tuition to be able to attend. And that's the money that we throw back into the budget. Our pre-employment program is a self-contained program providing unique services for kids with profound special needs. And other revenues like Medicaid, those small little things that you see in a lot of the budgets and our E&D is um, about the same, a little low than it was last year. And so that's how we get our money and how we use it. We all know that we are a service industry where most of our money is spent on salaries for teachers and administrators and they're not you know, spent on the computers and the materials and supplies nearly as much as a percentage as we are a service industry. So you'll see that the district leadership and administration and instructional services are pretty big hitters to how we spend our money. Our special education student services is the next column at 473.6. Then you have your transportation costs, your plant maintenance, retirement, insurances, and school choice tuition and asset acquisition. So the asset acquisition is from a Siemens project that's expiring in three years. That's um, when we had brand new HVAC 13 rooftop units, new boiler system, and updated that. That was with our own money. That was an assessment to the towns, right? right? That was with our own money. So that's where we are there. Next slide. This is just a little chart that Russ, if he would hear, loves. Um, he's our business manager. He calls it the Pac-Man slide. And when you look at town assessments, they're getting bigger and bigger. They're starting to eat up the rest of... That, that's not a good sign for towns, you know, so that gets bigger and bigger. That's 53 or 54% of our budget is what we're able to get from towns. And then we have how we're spending it. The big red area is what I just said. That's all administration, instructional, um, 
and all of those other ones and all the other little pieces of the pie go in to make up our entire budget. And that's the end of the presentation. So I kind of whipped through it pretty quickly, but I'm more than open for any questions that you may have. Uh, you mentioned out of district students yep. and school choice. Yeah. What's the difference? Out of district students, we don't have school choice. So uh, we don't, so, choice, uh, yeah, so what fine. we do is sometimes we're on the fringe of a town in either New Salem, Orange, or Warwick that border Athol. So there may be some custody things going on where a student from Athol goes to Monitech and they do have school choice. So we just keep one slot available just in case we end up having to pay that school choice tuition. So the 26 towns in Franklin County and 19, I believe, are yes. members of the district. Right. So that still leaves seven towns that could be tuition in. Correct. Like Charlemont, Rowe, there's a few others. Yeah. Yeah. Holly, there's, you know, there's a few of those towns on the outskirts in the Mohawk region. Sure. Okay. Any other question? Uh, you change when you see the need for uh, new programs or some type of training that's needed. Uh, has there been much change like that needed or, or programs dropped because they haven't Great you know, question. drawn well, many students? Great question. <clears throat> A couple, um, about three years ago, we had to um, get rid of our business technology program because lack of student interest and enrollment over the course of a five-year period, we were averaging two or three students. So that wasn't, and, and that's also a, sh a shock program. When you talk about business technology and learn how to do spreadsheets and computer software related to business, that can be done in almost any academic high school. So it wasn't unique to a, a vocational technical shop. So that brought us from 13 to 12. Over the last several years since then, we've been trying to look at what the needs are. We collected a lot of data and information through the Regional Employment Board, Mass Hire. Um, yeah. and plenty of other agencies to really look at the need for a veterinarian science program, a vet tech program that will offer um, students in our area because there's a large amount of farms in our yeah. county. There's a large amount of animals in our county. There's a large amount, I didn't even know it, but the veterinarian clinics are all over the place um, in Franklin County. Um, so looking at all that data and looking at all that need there was a likely um, opportunity, so we are in the process of applying and putting into place for the fall of 2019 a vet science program at Franklin County Technical School. Now it's going to be several years, or well, a year or two before we actually building out building for that facility, yeah, yeah. but in, we can get the program started and we phase it in over time. So we're going to have a classroom space or two being fully equipped to be able to have the vet tech instruction take place for the fall of 2019. And that will just be for freshmen. The next year, freshman, sophomore. The next year, freshman, oh, yeah. sophomore, junior. So we'll grow the program. By the time it gets to that sophomore, we'll have the outbuilding done by then. Yeah. And that's going to be a great opportunity for the students in the area to receive the ABA, which is Approved Veterinarian Assistant Certifications. You can get that as a high school student. And that's a pretty impressive qualification. You can work uh -huh. right in the vet shops. You can work in pet care industry. We'll have a grooming area. We'll have all those type of expertise for small animals. And uh, we're really excited about the uh -huh. start of that. And, you know, that's, I think, long overdue for Franklin County Tech, given the area in which we serve. Yeah, sounds good. Interesting. Yeah. Bonnie, do you have a question? No? no. I do have some copies of the draft. Um, this hasn't been ratified yet. We do have a meeting on February 13th, which is our first reading of the budget. Basically, there's nothing new that you haven't seen that's not in here, but I can leave a copy of the draft. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah. All right, so that's a copy of the draft. And uh, our town administrator is up in the back, Andrea Lama. Oh, yes. Right there. <laughs> And would, would you like the copy as well, if you yes, have? I'll, I'll keep that in the file if it's everybody. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and it, you know, some things do change when you have these meetings on the February 13th. Oh, yeah. And then we have the final budget vote on the sure. March meeting. So sure. that's, and then we go out to towns. 
So yeah. we like to try to do these meetings prior to going out to town so that the FinComs can have sure. an understanding of where we are in the budget process. Yeah, yeah. well, we appreciate you coming out. Uh, I'm not looking for any commitment from you or anything like that, but uh, is there any comment you want to make about the studies that are being done about combining administrations of different schools or increasing regionalization or anything like that? Well, I will say that um, I have been part of some of those discussions as well. Um, and it's always good for school districts to look for efficiencies. As I said back in the earlier screen, we share a position with the urban yes. school district. Yes. That's not all we do. We, also, we, serve, um, we have a cooperative agreement for uh, cross-country and track with Gail Monahue. Yeah. We, um, girls and boys soccer is a cooperative arrangement as well. You know, we are a part of a larger um, collaborative with our hockey team. You know, that's where part of Turner's Falls, Greenfield, us, I think there's another school or two involved. Um, so the collaboration efforts have been slowly going on for efficiency sake. Yeah. And I don't know where that would go. I'm, I am always open to having efficiencies and shared services that makes sense and have been well researched and studied. As far as um, the comprehensive school districts getting together, I'm not exactly sure where they are. They have some preliminary reports that are out. Mm -hmm. They have not really um, gotten together to figure out the next steps, but they're trying to plan what those may look like. Yeah. So I can't comment on anything other than that because I haven't been part of that particular process. All I'm doing is trying to look at avenues for efficiencies mm -hmm. down the road. So. And if there is opportunity to share, then we can certainly look into that. And sharing is always a good thing. Maybe there's a foreign language out there that we don't offer that someone we can share with, and maybe there's something that we, you know, we can share some things. Uh, as far as adding the program, sounds good. Uh, once in a while, we get a student that looks for to go to <coughs> Northampton. Yeah, <clears throat> because of something. It's not a, that's not offered here at Tech, yeah. and uh, usually it has something to do with agriculture. It always will have something to do yeah. with agriculture. What ends up happening if um, the towns in Franklin County were to send a student to Smith Vocational, they are paying at an increased tuition, much yeah. like those non-member towns pay to us. Yes. And those are around $20,000, but the biggest hit that you get is that you're paying for transportation. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that can run twenty five dollars or $30,000. So it's not unlikely for a student to pay $50,000. That was another motivation to start in the program that we had because it enables students that live in the county to get serviced by a need that the county has for 16500 as yeah. opposed to 50000 That makes a big difference big in a help. small town budget where a small community, we're really close. That makes a significant difference. So it will help in that regard. <clears throat> No, um, we don't have all of the agricultural programs that Smith Boak has. Maybe someday we will, but right now we don't. But well, we do have ones to get started. That's good. We appreciate it. It helps. So, uh, our town meeting is May 6th. Mm -hmm. Will you or someone be available yes. to be there in yep. case there are questions? Yeah, we're always there. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank appreciate you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Good job fishing the button. Right. So he brings me along. <laughs> Can you get the plug and everything? Yeah, you got it? All right.
All right, next we have uh, Bob McEwen, Chairman of the Board of Health, to talk about their budget. That's a tough act to follow. Slideshow. Ah. Two people. It's, it's They're always kind of good. Way. They have <laughs> detailed information and anticipate all our questions, I think, you know, so. Okay, uh, we did, I did, uh, the rest haven't seen it, but uh, I got an updated assessment from the Solid Waste District mm -hmm. after, we got something much earlier that was an estimate, and I guess they've actually voted on it, it says January 16th. So our assessment is, a, 11666, which is a three dollar drop from the current year. And that has to do with EQV, I think, the change now relative to the school. Because before we I watched the assessment up due to EQV and then this year we don't have that on the tax rolls per se. So that you see that change by twenty eight million when when the state does its EQV formulation. That's part of it, uh, uh, why that jumps around okay. with the district. Yeah, I think I, you said 11663, I put down 11902. 11666. Six. Yeah. Is what I've got from. Okay. Yeah, you had 11666, no. They had, last year's was, uh, or the current year, I should 11, say. 11,669. Right. So I think they went up by 2%, too, so which would, would make it about 11,902, I thought. I mean, but, evidently not, because they've... And can I say something before we really get into this? I want to address, and I don't address uh, people on neighbors or next door, that, that thing, but this was brought to my attention. People had questions. And I want to just say to the town, if you have a question about the Board of Health budget. I'm in here most Wednesday nights with the secretary. Come in and talk to us about it. Don't postulate or, or come up with things. There was a question about the $35,000 uh, that went back to the compactor. And this person said, oh yeah, well, the 35, where did it go? Because it was 14.8, that was what the compactor cost. That left 20,200, and you recall, uh, taking 15,000, we discussed that for the uh, fire station, the legal hunt. So that left us 5,200, which at town meeting they approved that we could spend on the decking. The uh, yeah. uh, and that was so that's where that all that money went. This person was asking questions about that, and I guess you'd have to follow through and go to every meeting. But and the deck repair cost is about 6,000, so that would would address that person's. Okay, so you're available in the Board of Health office up yep. there? If you have a, if somebody has a question, a citizen, come in any time and ask a question about okay. the budget, about anything at all, I'm, I'm, ha I'm fine with that. Okay, so now going through uh, the budget requests, the transfer station categories, all those items, you've dropped uh, the wages for the transfer station? I did, it seems uh, doable. Uh, there were, there were Places, this is a tough budget to do because there's a lot of changes. Um, we've been through three contractors for hauling. We went with Complete that we really enjoyed. Complete was bought out by uh, uh, another company that slips my, uh, my mind right now, okay. uh, Casella. And then we weren't happy with Casella and, and, and meeting with Jan, we decided to go to Waste Management which was about $2,400 cheaper than Casella would have been and, and like that. So there's no way to know where this is going except it's going higher, but that's a savings. Uh, there's a couple of savings we have, so I, I think we're, that's why I think we're fine with this budget. And I did lower that. I wanted to come down a little bit. I mean, that's always nice, but... So actually, this one I'm talking about is the wages right. transfer station wages. Right. So you've got the coverage you need over there. Yes. Okay. Because remembering, it's 29 hours. There's five people, but they they compete for 29 hours a week. So it's not that it's um, anything more than that. It's fairly easy to predict it. Yeah. Okay. There are five people, and they divide up the 29 hours. 
Yeah. They, they sign up for shifts or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> so it actually is two or three people each time the place is open, Yeah, right? each day. Yeah, okay, whatever, it works out, all right? And Jack has been working fewer shifts. He's still employed, he, he works when he, when he feels like, but the winter's been tough. And yeah, so. yeah, okay. What, and do you have any idea of what income comes in from the sale of bags? It's, it's probably around $40,000. It, it, I could do that and we could look at that. There's about, uh, it's a dollar and a half for a large trash bag. They cost about 18 cents and we give 15 cents to the vendor when they sell the bags, either MIMS or, or yeah. IGA. So it, it, if we sell, you know, close to that number, it's, it's probably in the, in the range of $40,000 a year. Okay. And the stickers should net close to 20. So that's about 60 right there that returns. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, the stipends, the salaries for the Board of Health members that, well, you know, if we, just, if we come up with a cost of living, you know, we apply that to wages mm -hmm. and that. Okay. Uh, next is animal inspector and that's staying the same unless we have a COLA. Okay. Uh, Septic inspection fees about the same. Yep. Now to the Board of Health expenses, uh, you've increased, you put back in, I guess, from some years ago, Board of Health telephone. Well, that would be the transfer station. Oh, okay. We pay that phone. Oh, okay. It's a landline. Uh, that's unclear to me because we we do get bills, so I, that that may have fallen through the cracks. I'm not sure. Yeah, because they've had a phone over there for a little bit. They need something, though. Oh, I yeah. mean, safety's sake. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you increase fifty dollars on the mileage. Mm-hmm. This is seminars or what types of things? Yeah, it's it's um, or inspections. Or if, we, if we do a seminar, we do one or twice a year, and we carpool to that. If it's Mass Association of Health Boards, that type of thing. Some of this is mileage. I've been accruing too, and I have not been uh, many hours as a recycling coordinator which is going to go up now because I'm, I'll, I'll get to that. We're going to work on uh, handling our own containers and, and trying okay. to put up a building. So we can talk about that. And shared health agent, you anticipate, they're, or you know they're going up 2%? Yeah, 2%. Okay. All right. Any further questions anybody has on the budget? There was some talk about... Uh, Getting a machine to strip wires. Uh, oh, we bought one. You, you do have that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They've been and, out there working doing the strip. I haven't even seen them. Yeah, and it's Brian, the, the one employee that loves to do it. So I've nicknamed him the Strip Meister. I don't think he likes that particularly, but he's he's very good at it, very adept. Uh, it's it's a lot more money than turning metal uh, wire with with you know insulation. We get a nickel a pound for that big open 30 yard box. It's a steel price. So this is, you know, around three bucks a pound or, or, or more as uh, number one copper. So it's a, it's a worthwhile pursuit if, if there's time, you know, yeah. for someone rather than sitting in the shed. Do that, okay. I'm just curious where that was. Because I didn't, I didn't see it, but yeah, I've seen it. It's really cool. Look at it when you go over there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's different, different, certainly. Yep. Doing it by hand. <laughs> no, probably doing it by hand. Yeah. That's <laughs> recycling it without that or yeah. with the machine. I see the barrel there with the wire in it and stuff, yeah. Okay, uh, next, then there's the capital request. And you've got in for this year, and that was in your 
capital plan for last year. I mean, uh, that's, it that's, was on last year for 20, fiscal 20. And this is something now, Gianna Mean, the district executive director, a Salt Lake district, um, Mike Dufresne, I believe, from NRRA, and potentially Todd from Atlantic Recycling. We're going to get together, we're going to put on a presentation, we're going to do the math to find out finally what we would really uh, save and make if we handle our own containers. What's happening with the MRF now is we're going down to $6 a ton. We were in past years at $40 or $50 a ton. So that was for cardboard and paper and all the containers. That's receipts we're getting. That's, we were getting that much. Now yeah. we're getting six, it's going to zero. They're trying to change it. Many towns are paying as much or more in many cases to get rid of recyclables as they are to get rid of trash, which is a bit strange. Yeah. Wyndham County, they get rid of a MRF and they are paying a fortune, sometimes $140 a ton to get rid of valuable material. The, there's not value, it's not tremendous value, but there is in, in aluminum, there is in cardboard, actually OCC is the most valuable item. The paper uh, has value. HDPE, which is really milk jugs and that, and then PET, the clear bottles, are valuable. Uh, as are aluminum cans, so that's cat food, that's anything. Um, the, the, a bit, huge difference, we would make some money, but we would bail these, we'd put up a building, have a couple of vertical balers, and bail the, the materials. They can be stored outside, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred pound bales. And uh, then we turn them in once in a great while. We load a tractor trailer full. Now those places you put your containers go out at under two tons. So that's a couple hundred dollars to send what is six bucks a ton, which will be shortly zero or more. They'll charge us for it uh, to go out all the way to West Springfield. If we do this ourselves with NRA's help, we market the materials and we save a tremendous amount on, on hauling. I mean, it's 10 grand a year or more to haul those containers to the MRF. It's similar with the, with the paper and cardboard. Uh, so we would be saving a lot on hauls and we would be making a lot of money on, on the, the prices, the market prices. You'd hold them and maybe put them on the market when it might be good? Well, when, when it gets good or when we have enough, because they don't want two bales. They want, you know, uh, yeah, many oh yeah, tons. a load. Yes, and the, but this is, um, it's really a no-brainer. It's 150, I'm gonna go into this now realistically and look at what it's gonna cost us. Um, if we put this building up, I wanna put a tiny bathroom in, uh, an eye wash, then there's a lot of questions about electric. We would need a, another VFD. We have an electrical room below uh, on the other side that contains two VFDs. It has electric heat. Those VFD, a vertical uh, frequency modulator or something, they're about five, six grand a piece. And if they freeze, they die. So if we lose power, we've got to run over there with a propane heater and keep that little place warm. I don't know if we'd move them or leave them there. Uh, and the balers would, would need a VFD for, for that, for two balers. But it's, it's really, um, whatever, I get off the pot time. Jan and I have been talking about this. I've been coming to you guys for years about this. And it was tough to do anything when we were getting 40 or 50 a ton. But where it's going into this negative territory, this is the, the, the real time to do this, I believe. And I think people will be supportive of it. Um, We've done a good job in the past. I, nobody talks about it much, but that um, outdoor wood boiler we got for the highway department. We went to town meeting. That was 35K. It came in just under that. That was the boiler, um, the complete inside and all. And that saves the town oil. Uh, probably six, 7,000 plus a year in oil heat because they burn wood at, at the highway. So there's... There are a lot of ways to, to make and save money, and I think this is uh, the last stepchild, the last way we can do that at the transfer station. There's really um, money to save and money to be made there. Wasn't there a thing in paper about recycling and that people would be in the paying to get rid of uh, recycling uh, in the very near future? I thought oh yeah, it's, it's going to cost us at least 
um, waste management is, and the MRF is trying to get a new contract. And whether waste management will keep the contract or someone else, they're looking, it'll be somewhere in the range of 50, 80 bucks a ton at least. In Wyndham County, they're paying as much as, excuse me, 140 a ton to get rid of recyclables. We pay, it went up to 80 now for um, trash, solid waste. But it, it's just mind blowing to consider paying more money yeah. to get rid of a product that has real value. Um, what is the incentive to have the recyclables? <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> it is. It'd be, if it were going to be that way, send it to f for fuel and burn it somewhere. Uh, some of the plastics aren't as valuable, but there's going to be no, it's not, they're not going to relent on this. Uh, they're going to want to continue recycling. And there are a lot of private equity and a lot of firms that are going into this now. And we will, you know, do that. China is actually buying um, recycling firms in this country. So instead of sending everything to China, they're buying the industry here, and it'll go to those markets. Um, they want clean material. Well, the real problem was this country went to single stream, and that's where you throw all the stuff together. And it, the contamination is enormous. We used to say you might lose 15 or 20 percent when you do dual stream like we do with contamination. Um, glass breaks, glass contaminates everything, plastics, paper. It, it, it's so bad. It could be, I've got to be careful not to say because people take exception to this, but it, it's 60, 70 percent waste. And if you see single stream going up a conveyor belt, it's, it is junk, it's trash. And so the idea is to build bigger, more extensive things to separate it and, you know, magnetic and different things. It, it, it just becomes really stupid. Because of our size, we're able to do this and we're able to, uh, we're not going to make a MRF, we're not trying to a municipal recycling facility, but we're just going to hand, want to handle our own. Um, it, it's, it's a nightmare because it is stacking up and even if people take this money for it, I mean some of it's going to Vietnam and Thailand and various other markets rather than China, but you don't know if it's really going there to be recycled or to be burned. Uh, and so people really want to do this recycling thing. And um, it's, it's going to come back. It's going to be handled in this country. It has to be. There's just too much material to, and, and there is value in it. Um, when do you think that you uh, have more specific information on this building that would be needed? Because we've got to be putting our budget together and planning what we've got available for this coming year. And so we need to know quite specifically what the cost would be before we can consider it. Uh, you, you say you're getting together with Jan to talk yeah, more about and it. and Tom, we're going to get, I want to get some firm estimates. Uh, not certain about the size, but we, we uh, I'm going to use Todd for that, Todd from Atlantic, Hager. And um, when do you think you might be talking with her about it and getting together. Well, we've already been, we get together and we've already oh, been meeting. Well, so is this 150 a firm figure then? No, no. We also have an revol in the re a revolving account, about 60, probably more than 60, 60 or 65. That would be, you know, uh, able to be spent on this too. So what date do we need it by? The dollars, if they're looking to do it in... Well... As early in March as possible. First week in March? I think so, yeah. Do you think you could? I hope so. You know, and if not, if it has to go to another year, okay. But um, this is, it's just the time to do this. And Jan asked me to back off a few years ago, and we did. And we, she thought she'd be able to convince, not that we have any representatives left, uh, people go to Boston and, and change some things, but it, it's, it's not happened. And the single stream is an awful lot of the state uh, that they've adopted that. And they tend to do that because it looks good. They can, people can say, you can take Springfield, Holyoke, Chicopee, and you can say, look at our recycling rates, because people throw stuff in. And, and it's, it's not a true figure, but they yeah. can look good with that. And they can say, wow, we're really recycling now, even though it's not accurate. Uh, it, Go ahead. Um, you say you got 60 and you're revolving, so could we take 
just let's say the 150 was real, we would take 60 off of that, or are you really talking it will cost 210? You've already figured the 60. Well, the, the 60 is money that we've saved right. from, and uh, this was the, the our rationale for, for saving it too. No, but yeah. my question is it's the 150 net, the total or? Bill. The 150 was a number that came out of my okay well, head. The no. 60 would be applied toward that. So we would really only need 90. Well, I don't know if it's going to be 150. Maybe it's, maybe it's 130. Maybe it's 200. Okay, but the okay. 60 would be applied. Sure. Yeah. Okay, sure. So okay. So the first week in March, you'd have to have it to us to be able to fit it in this year's dollars. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll know then. You can let us know. If you're going to put it off, yeah, or what's, what's frightened me was bringing this to the town, and there's always they're putting a safety complex or something. There's always a worry yeah. about budgets, and I didn't want to fail at this because if I fail, if the town says no, I'm not going to bother with it anymore. Um, this is this is the time to do it. It's you know the last stitch, and it's not that these things aren't valuable. That's what is is disturbing. Um, it and, and Jan is absolutely on board with this, uh, okay. and. and you know, realizes she's kind of disgusted uh, watching what happened to the Murph, what happens, the costs that those little towns are absorbing now. Um, well, another reason to do it, if you're going to, I guess, is costs go up each year. Yes. We just need hot data, hard data, yeah. to yeah. dollars. Okay, anybody else have any comments or questions? Well, Tony? The, the idea is Excellent. Uh, what we haven't had is a plan, a number, right. and that's, right. that's, what, that's what we need for that sort of thing. There's, and I have come to you before and it was, would we do this as an enterprise fund or just do it? I think there's enough in this budget that we would just do that and not have to go with an enterprise fund, and then we would realize what the budget needed to be, and I think it would be a lot lower because we'd be bringing in and saving a lot of money. Uh, yeah. You know, that's significant money. The, I think the 138 for the transfer station, bless you. But um, if you look at that, if you say 40 for bags and another 20, and we leave 20 or 30,000 behind most budgets. We didn't this year, uh, we went out and we bought two, contain two containers uh, and those save us 200, what, at least 200 bucks. See, that was what you're referring to is that money is going into the general fund rather than having an enterprise fund to keep it Right. Within yours, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment, questions? Okay. All right. Cool. Um, Look forward to seeing the numbers. That was painless. By March, you know, for that. Yeah. You wanted right. numbers for the compactor, and right. I couldn't get them in time, but it, I was certain that 15 it was 14.8. The building. What's that? The building. The building oh, no, the compactor yeah. before. Yeah. Remember we bought the compactor? Yes, yeah. But I'm looking forward to seeing the numbers for the building. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay. Um, I don't. I'm not hearing at all from ZBA. Uh, the first follow-up I made was with the secretary, and got no response there. So this time I've sent directly to the chair at her office and so forth, and I still, we've got the budget, but they want a computer, and I want to get them in on. to talk about it. They just got one a while ago, a couple years ago. Well, that's what I thought. But, uh, so I want to find out. As I understand it, there's a number on each computer that the town has that has a date on it. Do you know anything about that yet? I have all the dates. I have all the dates. Oh, you do? Okay. So, uh, Dan is looking for a new computer for the town clerk's office, and ZBA is looking for one, so I'll talk with you about dates on them instead. There needs to be a capital plan on these computers. You've got 19. Yes. Yeah, we've talked about that for a few years. Okay. Yeah, you can have We've talked about a capital plan for computers for a few yes, years. Yes, different ones. We'll so account for them. They, uh, ZBA one and Dan's were on the capital plan sheet. So, okay. Uh, so we 
see, trying to get her in to talk about that, ZBA. Uh, review the minutes of January 22nd. Come up and join us up here if you want. All right. <laughs> okay. by Bonnie and, Dan, and seconded by yeah, Tony <laughs> to, to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. As far as mail is concerned, uh, I'll see I'll sign this. We have a copy of the letter that Andrea wrote on behalf of those of us that received the letters. This is the, about the first letter. And I don't think I need to go through all the details of it, but it's responding. In the okay, we also received. Um, and I sent on to all of you. Phil, it's on the uh, monthly balances. Mm -hmm. We skipped we skipped December, mm -hmm. and I ran into him up here the other day. We talked about this. He wants he's changed the name a little bit, and he's putting it through June because that's what the appropriation is. But it will be done as of the date that's shown in the upper left corner, which was in the January. That was that day. Yeah. Yeah. And he's also given us uh, the enterprise fund balances. And another one that I like is, looks like these, some of the other accounts that are separated out here. Okay. Or, uh, meetings attended. Um, the uh, governance committee meeting uh, group uh, we met last week. We had as a guest uh, the town clerk uh, Dan Campbell, uh, who was uh, sat down with us, and we had a, a discussion and a question and answer with him. And then tomorrow we're going to have a meeting with our town administrator, who will attend our governance committee meeting. And uh, we'll, we're looking forward to her assistance and also her, you know, viewpoints. And then we're going to um, start uh, combining our uh, reports. Coming to a, uh, obviously we're going to have to discuss the um, amongst ourselves where we're going, what we're going to address, and uh, we already have some uh, foundation of what the areas we're going to. So we're on schedule where everything is going pretty smoothly and we should be on schedule to make sure it's uh, not only, uh, out, we're gonna have one more meeting with the general public. Uh, I did have the meeting with the senior center, which went very well, uh, was well attended. Uh, Andrew was there and uh, what's that? Uh, it was informative and we were, it was well received. Our, the work that we, you know, I try to express not the details, but the general overview of what we've accomplished and appear to be well received by the residents who attended. And uh, like I said, then we're gonna have a informational session when we finally come down to a report uh, because we want the town to be uh, as, as uh, informed as possible, not just to drop the report at them at town meeting, but to have them, when they come into town meeting, they'll be well informed. 
with uh, you know websites documentation so they know what you know in advance of what we're reporting to and uh, that okay. um, public <coughs> safety no meetings. Andrea and I have talked about that. Okay. Anything on CPA? Uh, CPA. <coughs> we did meet last week. Uh, we had some people come in to discuss their proposals. Um, we took action on one of them, uh, that being the Recreation Commission. They wanted a uh, secure building for their summer uh, program equipment, which yeah. is currently scattered in various places, and um, they wanted a, uh, to buy a shed, uh, and then they had some. They wanted to put it on a on a foundation or on, on site work, some site work for it. Yeah. Uh, we did not fund the whole thing. We uh, did. We decided to fund the purchase of the building plus some money towards the um, the slab site. or something yeah. well it, it should be a slab and now um, you know maybe the town can do some some of that yeah. work yeah. but we don't, don't want to just put it on the ground um, yeah right and this is a building that is movable you know will be movable if and they want to put it up there behind the elementary yeah, school. Right, right, near the, right near, near the other building. Yes. It's there on yeah. the north end of the uh, playing field. Yeah, okay. There. So I um, thought that was a good use. Um, another proposal was for the um, field library. Yeah. The doors, yeah. which are in terrible shape. Uh, we only had, they only got one uh, quote, which was oh. from Mike Humphreys, uh, uh, which was to basically replicate the doors that are there, yeah. uh, which is quite expensive. Oh yeah. Uh, Good work, but no question. Oh, he does excellent work, but uh, it's quite expensive. Now, uh, there's no question in our minds that something needs to be done, but we have asked them to look into some other, uh, you know, get get some other quotes, uh, looking to ready-made doors, sure. uh, even though it's a strange size. I mean, there are places like, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, re, uh, reuse centers that yeah. uh, have, might have, might have something like that. Uh, <clears throat> and, and so we've, uh, we've asked for more information. We okay. will be meeting with them again. Uh, if they do come up with something here, um, but it did did seem like the one estimate was not was a a lot and b not enough to uh, make a, a decision and enough information. I know for the north building of the elementary school, they did want it like original, and I think it was Humphreys that was doing that uh, front door, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. and, but this is different, I say, yeah, I agree. And, and we all, I think everybody agreed that it was, uh, uh, the Field Library is, is, a, is a valuable community resource. Oh yes, yes. And they do a lot of stuff down there and it's, you know, we, we want to do something for them. Yes. Um, and we'll see what, what happens when we get the additional information. Okay. Do you have, does the building fall under historic? It does fall under historic. historic. It is um, two things. One, uh, it is over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, two, uh, the historical commission has, uh, that's one of the things that we have on our, you know, check sheet. Yes. And, you know, um, what does it do? And if the historical commission says it has a place in the archaeological or culture or history of the town. So it is a requi it's a requirement versus a preference. Is that what you're saying? It is required that the doors have to be replaced or oh, replicated? They, and they're not yeah. replicated, but they, they're in very terrible shape as breeze. I understand. I'm just like, asking if they were required. But there is no requirement okay. that it be replicated. Okay. No. All right. Uh, but, you know, to keep the character of the building. No, 
yeah. uh, we certainly want to uh, uh, match it as close as we can. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there are obviously uh, problems because of the size. I think it's seven foot high instead of six eight, for instance. Sure. It's a double door. Uh, you know, it is the original doors yeah. of the of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, something needs to be done. And we okay. Need to do something, but we need more information. Sure. Okay. And the third one that we discussed was the. Uh, Preston. The plaque down in, in the lobby of the uh, town Plaster. here about uh, Parsons' his name. Uh, Preston, isn't it? Well, whatever. Well, anyway, uh, he, um, this was put in a long time ago, and uh, we did get a copy of a little newspaper article from Springfield Recorder in 19. Yeah. 20 something. 27, um, the town hall was built, so. Uh, well, well, <coughs> but uh, we don't know where uh, the money originally came from. I guess yeah. the town did appropriate the money oh. for that, for that plot. Oh, okay. I don't know. It was back in whatever it was. Uh, so the town did appropriate the money. Uh, but we, a um, couple of things. One, um, they say he received the medal uh, for this, um, event, not adventure, but this uh, thing he went to Russia for to uh, do this. It was uh, a very important thing in, in the war effort or something to that effect. Uh, we don't have any documentation. We, we would have liked to have seen some documentation on that. Number yeah. one. Two, uh, he was born and raised, I think, in West Northfield, but he left as a teenager, or as a young teenager. Had very little to do with the town uh, after that. Uh, when he came back from this mission to Russia, he, I think six days later he died. Um, but um, basically we're looking at how the fact that it's in the building, the town hall, which is uh, a historic building, um, qualifies for that. But we're, we, I guess we're having some trouble with um, how this person contributed to yeah. Northfield, and should we put, and it is a, quite a substantial amount of money to restore oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, So we, we did ask, uh, again, for some more information if there is uh, something perhaps, it is it is dingy and it, it certainly could use some work. Uh, there is some, but... But, uh, but it's concrete, isn't it? And it's it, pretty it, heavy on that north wall. Well, no, yeah, I, I don't know if that's, I don't think it's... I don't know how thick it is. Uh, yeah. But, uh, for instance, there are uh, companies that restore gravestones. Yeah. And they uh, do some work on the, on the face of them and, and yeah. perhaps do some work if there's any cracks, I don't know. So we've asked also for some more information on that besides the one estimate, which was based on something I think they did about 10 years ago. They got this estimate. Uh, and this is from a company who uh, uh, I'm not sure, we're not sure if this is current monies. Yeah, yeah. Not. Uh, cost, cost 10 years ago and today are quite different. They're quite different and I'm not sure, we're not sure about that. But uh, So we've asked again for some more information. Okay. When uh, Bernie Kuviak was here as the interim administrator, he contacted a man that has a company that does restore gravestones and I'm not sure whether we're going to have some work done or he's looking at to giving prices on some work in some, some of the cemeteries. So that would be, if they go into something like that, it might be. Well, that's, that's what uh, we've asked him to investigate. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And what else? Yeah, the Heart Committee meets tomorrow night. So, okay. Uh, we're, we're still working on that. I think there were some good things brought up at the meeting of the finance and uh, select, board. Uh, select board meeting. So we'll be 
you know, working on uh, the, the district, region, district. district agreement. Yeah, yeah. and we, uh, we're close to finalizing okay. what we're going to uh, propose to the town. Okay. Uh, I was going to mention that meeting. Uh, we were all there. Thank you all for coming. They were... Uh, I don't know, 20, 26, 28 uh, town officials, select board and finance committee members, and then there were probably about 20 others, so it was standing room only. Uh, it, was, it was a good discussion. Uh, we purposely did not allow public comment, a public comment period because we felt this was the opportunity for the select boards and finance committees to communicate to each other about our feelings on uh, the school at this time, particularly, and uh, so uh, they, the consensus was still we were supporting the fact that we're recommending no increase in assessments to the towns on the 2020 budget. The uh, we disagree with the school administration as to how to handle the loan. Uh, the town officials would like to have a five-year time limit on paying off the debt. And the town, the school administration is talking 10 years. They're implying that the state is requiring it that way. Uh, and Andrea has looked into it and uh, the legislation doesn't require the ten, it says up to 10 years, I think you said. Yeah. And so uh, the other thing that we don't agree on at all is the fact that the school administration wants to put the debt repayment into the operating budget. What well, seems to me if we're talking about, if they're paying any attention to what we say about no increase in the operating budget, why would you take up part of that with this debt repayment? Unless they think that justifies an addition, I don't know. Andrea has offered to send a letter on our behalf uh, with our objections to that. And uh, I'd like to get a vote supporting that, or doing that tonight from us, if you would. Why are we opposed to putting it in the operating? Why are we? Because it's a debt. We had the technology debt recently, over four years, I think it was, and then it's borrowing, and that we never include those things in operating budgets. So we're opposed because that's how we've done it in the past. Not necessarily. We just don't think it's it's part of the annual operating budget. It's a debt, and there's you know you have the operating budget, you have capital expenses. We haven't heard from them what they want might have for needs this year. And then we have debt service. And they're also negotiating a contract with the teachers. Yeah. So, but I just want to ask you though, if, we, if they take the debt and put it into their operating budget, and we have said a zero increase in the uh, uh, assessments, this would force an increase in assessments, right? Because that would increase their overall budget, correct? If well, the debt is rolled into their budget? If you know, it depends. We're saying no increase. Yeah. Do they want to eat that? No. That's their doubt. choice. So if they roll it over... I don't think they intend it that way. Is it our job to point it out to them? Well, we've told them what our assessment limit That's is. That's right. We said this is what we'll pay. We'll be paying more. If it's but our intention at that time, when the four finance committees got together, and then the, the four chairs afterward, was that the debt would be outside of that. Not that it would have to be absorbed in the budget. And this was a surprise when they came out with it in the budget. Now last night, the Berniston Select Board and Finance Committee met, and they are very pleased to have this letter go, and they voted unanimously for it. I will be asking our Select Board to consider this next, at their next meeting. 
Well, I think too, you also, besides having to say that the schools themselves, that's also the overseer was quite adamant that this is the position that he believes the commissioner of education is going to dictate to our district or to our communities that they want to follow. So uh, I hope that, that the loan is into the operating. Well, he mentioned that, and he also remember mentioned that he's we want we had suggested five year instead of ten year, and he said no, you're going ten year. Because remember, some of the details of this loan have already been ironed out on their on their own without our having any say in it. And he also made it clear about the issue of us paying. Oh, I, remember, yeah. you mentioned we mentioned too about doing additional ninety thousand dollars for the school, and he says no, basically to that also. So I think not only uh, drafting a letter, but I think we should also contact our local representatives because. Uh, again, uh, we're running out of time because it's going to be March. Aren't they going to finalize this loan agreement in March? And the other thing is, we sh it shouldn't be just... I understand the need for the overseer, but I also would like to have that the Commissioner of Education just doesn't, on his own say-so, dictate to the communities. If we're willing to pay the debt off quicker, why can't we? I think maybe our political representatives, like our state senator and state rep, would hopefully be of assistance in this matter so we could try to get a five-year versus a 10-year. There are some other things that have happened. Um, we, you know, in contacting the overseer, mm -hmm. Jane from Berniston did that, but he responds to both of us mm -hmm. in email. And he, you know, he agreed to come out and talk with us. Yeah. The day before he was to come out, uh, he contacted us and wanted to know if he could meet with the chairs of the four finance committees and a representative of the select boards from the four towns before this meeting last Monday night. Mm -hmm. And we said no. We wanted everything out in the open on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, Jane asked him, said that we would be interested in finding out what his responsibility is to the town. Yeah. We're not exactly sure what the overseer's role is. Yeah. And he responded that he has absolutely no the responsibility to the town. He told yeah. us that. By the school and the state has said, this man, the, this person oversees the school. He's recommending, and the state's recommended, that the school have more conversation with the towns. Yes. But their job is to get the school in order. Not the towns, it's right. the school in order. So, which uh, makes sense to me. So, I don't think we can blame the person. No, no, no I'm just saying no, it no. would have been nice if there could have been some type of negotiations or getting us involved in the long period of time. And how I we think could that's a letter to the direct yeah, correct. chairman of yeah. the school committee saying we want to know why. We're writing to the superintendent yeah. of the administration. But who does the actual loan? The superintendent of the school, school committee. committee. Yeah, oh, so it's the school committee, committee that's in charge. Why would you write the superintendent? School committee. You'll write the school committee and CC the superintendent. So we're writing the school committee to I, ask. I would suggest that because they're the ones who are going to vote on the debt. They approve so. all the borrowing debt. The committee will approve all the borrowing debt. Right, so the school committee is the one we really need to be asking. Well, she'll. Yeah. <coughs> well, we still have to ask, is, this is what the recommendation too was of the overseer, wasn't it? Is it what he explained? I don't know whether he did. Or he I just think that, yeah, I think it should be addressed, obviously, superintendent of the, the school committee, but we should also address it too to the overseer to let know what our desires are. Yeah, I think he got a surprise the other night. Yeah, because I think he was surprised that we were having some pushback on the terms of the loan that yeah. we want to all, uh, all I, the contact I had had with him and the other three, he called us some time after he had been appointed and he called me on the phone and just wanted to introduce himself, tell me who he was and they'd been appointed overseer. And the only thing he said to me was that about the budget was he said, I hope you'll continue to support the school. They're doing a good job. I didn't commit one way or the other. I didn't think it was appropriate at that time. And he said similar things to the others that he called. So um, he reports to 
B.O.R., Mary Jane Handy, and to the uh, to Jay Sullivan of Desi, I believe it is. And so, uh, do we? I want to send this letter. I think. Oh, I agree. I have no disagreement with the letter at all. I agree with that. Okay, we need a motion. Well, the letter. Where is the letter going to? Whatever Andrea School thinks is best. School committee. School committee. And what no, are we can't. actually asking? You'd be asking them to make it a five-year note instead of a ten-year note, and to uh, make sure that it's assessed to you in your capital or debt assessment, not as an operating expense. And can that letter also be sent to our representative? Oh, it's going to have and, a lot of CCs. I mean, Good. that's what I want. CCs. I just that's, want, yeah, that's what I wanted to find out. Yeah. Okay, I definitely want a CC to our state rep. I think. To the, I think the lunch thing is. I don't think we could make a decision quick enough for them to... For the additional 90,000. For the additional 90, yeah. And there was some misunderstanding the other night. We, all the towns voted one third at our last, at May's last meeting, our town meetings, the annual town meetings, uh, with the expectation that we would be voting similarly for the next two years. But uh, the school has to have some time frames on this, and so I don't, you know, it would take a town meeting vote, and we had in mind we'd do it at the annual town meeting. The school's saying, well, you'd have to have a special town meeting, and you haven't got the da, da da So I think we'd just go with the other two items and stuff. So, all right. Uh, uh, I'll make a motion we support this uh, letter that will be going to the uh, school committee. Is that? I'm not sure the exact uh, wording you can read out. Yeah. And the letter will be asking. Or asking for reduction of the time. Yeah. Um, and for the debt service to be separate from and the for budget. The debt service to be separate from the operating budget. Yeah, from the operating budget. Yeah. Is there a second? I second that motion. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. I said aye. I vote. Okay, all right. So it's four to one of those present. All right. Thank you. Um, Andrea has given us information. I've got it here. Okay. She said uh, the warrant is going to. I guess it's going to be open when next week when they meet. It's open now. And it'll be closing March 25th. <laughs> and the select board will be signing it April 8th. And town meeting is May 6th. So, and along with that, I am trying to get two more departments to come in about their budgets or we don't have the fire department budget we don't have the planning board budget yet and we both tried she sent a follow-up um, i sent an email this afternoon saying that the, the last date for meeting with us would be next week the 12th and uh if they want a budget, want consideration of it, we've got to know by that time, got to hear from him by then. On the 19th, Andrea will be in with the uh, select board budget, all the other accounts and that sort of thing we'll be discussing. So I hope to wind up these meetings next Monday night. Not that that's the end of our discussions before town meeting, because of course, that's the point of knowing about the warrant as to when uh, we'll have Orange articles to consider what type of funding that might require. So, uh, are there any budgets that we've received that you would like more information on? Uh, the only information I want uh, was, is the issue of the EMS budget because there are requests for additional $40,000. Um, according to, uh, there's supposed to be an MOU. Is that correct, Andrea, an MOU? Uh, when do you anticipate having that completed? Uh, I'm going to ask the select board on Monday night if they're happy with it, to see that they're happy with it, that it has to go to the internal. Okay. So it's really for them to decide one day if it's a document that they're happy with. 
Well, the only thing we request is one of copies available if we can make it you know, available to the uh, chair of our sure. finance committee. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. One thing uh, I am concerned about on that, mm -hmm. that one as well is uh, the budget shows so many hours for paramedic level, I think, and things like that. I wonder if we should get that, the select board, not us necessarily, should get that in writing as a commitment. The only place we see it is on this budget request. And it's not a total business plan as such, but it, it's what this extra 40000 is based on. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm thinking about it being in writing rather than just a budget request to the finance committee. Did they have that many hours? write down exactly how many hours and stuff? So he did on the budget request. So what are you asking him again for in writing? Well, specifically what that applies to, what positions, and uh, I realize, yeah, right. as he said, you can't always say what time the shift will be. I mm -hmm. understand that. But I think I'd like, to a little, I'd like it a little more specific rather than just on our budget request. Uh, I didn't have any others that I thought. No, about. I don't have any others so far. I uh, have to acknowledge that I haven't been able to watch the meeting for the police report um, presentation on their budget. Was there any feeling of option one over option two? We haven't had the police budget. Well, that's what I thought. So when are we going to? Next week. They're coming in next week? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't know. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, no, it hasn't been done. But I didn't think it had an order I hadn't found it. There have been two. <laughs> I send out to you two budgets. Right. Mm -hmm. We are not going to consider the larger of the two. We're only considering the smaller one. Okay. And that, it, the reason there were two was because the interim town administrator had asked the chief to put in a second one, considering extra coverage because of the college campus. Oh. And Andrea oh, and I have talked about it. And we don't think that's necessary. There was no layoff when the campus closed. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the force that we had uh, covered far more students than they'll be there for a long time. And so, and I've talked to, uh, I've emailed the chief about it that we would like to just consider the smaller and that's fine with him. Mm -hmm. he, he was doing what he was told to do, put it in the second one. Yeah. Uh, we also don't know what the college is going to do for their own in-house security and protection of their own assets. So why would we be responsible for that right. for additional manpower when most colleges have their own security yes. yeah. force? Or, uh, they wouldn't personal. have authority, some of the authority that the police would no, have. No, obviously, but, but again, we'll have to wait and see what they have yeah. to bring forward to us. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. Question. Okay. Right. Has anybody contacted our reps and asked for an appointment at the state level for us to go and talk to them about changing 10 to 5? Rather than just going to the school committee, because the school committee is not going to work very fast. they got a lot of things going on. Can we go actually to the head of the horse that's making these decisions? Well, well Representative right? Mark has a rep here quite often. Actually, the person who still has the final say is, your, is the commissioner. Right, so can we... <clears throat> the commissioner's going to get the letter. Yeah, but... <clears throat> and so is the person. I don't, I don't, personally, I don't know how much this uh, gentleman who's the overseer has sway. It talks about the director in consultation. I don't know whether the director in the law is referring to this overseer at and the commissioner. So it says the director and the commissioner will be, I don't know who the director is, the director of accounts plus the commissioner. I'm not sure, I mean, I have the legislation, so I was reading it. I don't know whether that's what they referred to when they say director. So those are the ultimate people who um, have the well, authority, but I think that the school committee has the authority to request it. Um, oh, I agree with that. The, they request it from here, and the overseer says, yes, it's a good idea, or you need to tweak it here. And then once they convince him, he goes to the commissioner, and the commissioner has to sign off on it. I'm saying, if you want something to really move, can we try to talk to the commissioner? Well, let's try the letter 
first. I suspect you're not going to, you're going to have a hard time going trying to go over the head of the school committee. I don't think the commissioner is going to vote against them. I think your best bet is to try and get them on board with your request with the commissioner saying, yes, I would sign it. Yeah. I just think that the school commissioner is not going to go over them They're, right. uh, easily. They already did it without us. So why would they right. take into account what we're wanting now? I think a concerted effort of the select boards and finance committees um, and alerting the commissioner, who has no clue at this point you even asked for that, mm -hmm. um, to get them on board to prove that pressure to you, maybe say to them, hey, what's going on? Why am I getting these letters? That would maybe start a dialogue that they haven't felt the need to have at this point because they've sort of had all the cards. And so when is this decision have to be made, Bob? It's, it's next month, the, the loan. Is going to be the terms, or they're going to have the agreement of the loan that we were told in March. I don't have a specific date, if remember, but they said March. <laughs> but our warrant closes on three twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm not so sure about that either. I mean, they may be getting quotes, but they can't release the borrowing. They're not going to bid that borrowing until the towns prove that they'll pay for it. So that's for the town meeting. That's for the town meeting. But right. they were saying that they would have the agreement, the details completed, and that way they could make a move to close give notification of closing the schools. Well, that's, a, yeah, closing the schools is a different issue, but that doesn't mean that they aren't going to banks. They aren't getting quotes, they aren't getting the details. I just so, don't so they'll have an agreement, but they won't, they'll say that the, the loan agreement or the paperwork is completed to meet the satisfaction of the Commissioner of Education. Right. But then the next step will be for- Actually the, going to get the borrowing. Get the borrowing. Two separate from, things. Yeah, okay. Just, just, you know, some of this has been going on um, there was contact made with DOR about this and about some of our concerns and it was sent, it was forwarded to the overseer. So they're going to go through channels. It's not that they're going to accept our comments and complaints and so forth. It's, you got to work up to it. I, I frankly don't understand why the school wouldn't be thrilled to have you guys pay off sooner. Mm. Puts them in a better financial position. They, this debt would be gone in five years. They would look better. So I'm, You can have the whole school lunch done in two years. I mean, we're going to do one now, and we were going to do one But I don't understand Sunday. their financial person at the school su suggested that's not a good idea and doesn't want to go forward with that, which I can't understand. I haven't gotten a rationale for that except saying that it was not what was it not proper or not legal they want to roll that. that lunch deficit no, 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 no. into the debt yeah they want to do it it's, you know, it's a good budget because right. theoretically until that section is paid off for taking care of it's still a debt on their books yeah and That's they don't right. want the right. debt and on they their say books. they because they can't they've already deficit spent for 10 years and on this lunch well for fiscal, it's been there for a long time. Fiscal 18, uh, the whole thing is in the red. And now we're assessed to make up that shortfall that they mismanaged. See, I think that's that, why I don't mind it being in part of the operating budget, because we've already decided what we're giving them, and they have to find the difference. No, we've, the idea was we would also pay off the debt in addition to that. Well, that small one, yes. Right, and if you're going to do that, I can see why they would want 10 years, because now that becomes a smaller amount to roll. That would make sense that they would want 10 years if you're going to force them to a flat operating. You force them to, 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 to five years, that's a bigger payment, it's a bigger cut. I'm having trouble hearing you, I'm if sorry. If you force them to take it and put it into their operating and tell them to be flat, then they absolutely want 10 years, because that's a smaller number. If you're saying we could do it on top of it, separate it out, we'll give you the flat operating and then we want the debt separate, then they shouldn't really care. They should, no. uh, they should be happy you want to pay it off faster. Yeah. But if you're going to force them to roll it into operating, then absolutely they But we haven't forced them. They volunteered. But that's why, <laughs> they, that's why they would want the longer operating. One thing. If they're, going, if they're going to meet your request for, for flat, which is always, a, that's another discussion. There's another thing that concerns me. I don't know what their strategy is for this, but when it comes to town meeting, you cannot question any of the items within the right. school uh, budget. It's either the whole thing, all or nothing. Yes. So you roll the debt into there, no questions, right? 
That's the way I'm looking at it. And I don't like that either. That's law. Yeah. But you may also request that it be spread out as a separate item. You don't have to have one big vote at the school in our big budget and just have the other things. You can separate things out. This is such a huge year. You can request it's, it. It's an operating budget. No, I meant the, the school's budget from the omnibus budget. Oh, well, that hasn't doesn't affect what we're talking about. On but this. you can, and then it gives the school a specific time with a specific bottom line budget. And when it's in the big one, you can't well, debate it and change it. You still couldn't change it. It's still yeah. well, actually, you could. You can't change. You it. could open the omnibus article, and you could take the first ten of them and talk about it, and vote on them, and then you could take the school and you could discuss it. Nobody, even if they're in the same article. So you, you can, if the school budget was within the omnibus budget, we can vote that school budget independently. Yes. We never have before. We've always done it one big vote. Right. I mean, yeah. You can open it and discuss it, and then vote the whole thing as one, which is what most people tend to do. But you can actually break it out. Yeah, Even if it's, it's been talked about before. Yes. It's up to the moderator how well, I understand thing. that. But if there's requests from the town to do it a different way, because it's identified, it's not like you say the omnibus article for absolutely everything is ten million dollars, and you don't identify it, then you couldn't do it. You couldn't now go back and say, well, there's this piece that you're not talking about that's the school. But because you've actually broken those out of the omnibus, you can discuss them and. Uh, and talk about them differently. We, we always have, but we've never voted them independently. Now, just look at what you've received lately, and there, you st might start something. There'll be other accounts that they want to pull out separately. I, I, I personally, Lois, I don't see a problem with that. Well, I... The only thing with that is it could turn a town meeting into a multi-day or a very, yeah. very, very, very long meeting. Yeah, and the other it. issues, too, is, is that if you start to address any type of salary issues, especially if an individual holds a contract, you're, you're causing issues there, too. We have a school that's taking over 50% of our budget, and we're mm -hmm. voting it with most of the other budget, mm -hmm. the majority of the other. So it's one big thing where people really can't say. I want some more details on that. Isn't, isn't, isn't the process they would have to, somebody would have to make a motion to pull that out? Yeah. I don't and think. And then they vote on that motion? Yes. If right it's there. It's not separated out before. It's not something that I want to no, address have, as finance committee. It has to be done beforehand. You can do it beforehand. It's printed independent. That's different. I think we've got That's enough on I'm our plates without that part of it right now. You know, I'd rather not. If it happens, it happens, but, uh, all right. Um, you just play into the fact that nobody can do anything about it. That's the idea. If you don't separate it out, nobody can change anything. We're always saying we only can vote the bottom line. We can't change anything. It wouldn't if it's change. Separated if you separate it, you're still not well, going to be able to. Just be aware that if you vote a different budget amount, it, the whole budget's null and void unless everybody else in the other towns voted. I don't know what the requirement is. Do you have a three towns or do you have a weighted town vote? You, by one town changing it doesn't I, I understand it. that, but you could have all four towns do it differently and understand this whole thing. Lots if, of things are changing. If all four towns voted a different number, the budget just fails. And then, then they have to yeah. all go back to town meeting and vote. Until you have a meeting of the minds, of whatever the regional agreement says to pass it, anyone, any town who votes one dollar different, it, depending on what you need to pass it, it just nullifies the entire budget, and then you have to go back to another town meeting. I mean, just that's that's how it operates. I don't doubt that, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that, to be honest with you. <laughs> We've got the notice of uh, the preliminary cherry seed estimates are out and uh, there'd be an increase of about 17,000. Now usually that this is the governor's budget. Anything can happen between now and when it's finally passed but that's the figure that we generally go by when we do our planning and so far we've come out okay. In other words, 
we're estimating on probably the low side of things so we don't get burned. Anybody have anything else they want to bring up? Anything you'd like to add? No, not oh. yet. Okay. I've got two weeks to bring you hopefully a whole lot of interesting uh, <laughs> Then we will meet next week and I'll try to get these others in so uh, the alternative is they have no budget or or we level fund, whatever, I'm not sure, so. All right, motion to adjourn. So moved. I second it. Motion made and seconded. We are adjourned.